Hello everyone. My name is John Fox, PhD. Welcome to Sociology of Gender. I'd like you to call me John if you can. Refer to me as John. I will answer to Dr. Fox or Mr. Fox or Professor Fox or any of those titles, but I prefer if you call me John because that's my name. Um, this is Sociology of Gender, Sociology 28, and welcome to the course. This is a fully online course, and this is the first time I'm teaching online. I've resisted teaching online for a long time because I don't think that students do as well online as they do face-to-face. -face. However, times are changing and I got to keep up with it. So I'm going to be putting a lot of effort into this. So bear with me throughout the quarter. Um, many of you have had me before and you've had me face to face in the classroom. So I know some of you and I know some of your, um, and so you're familiar with how I am face to face online. It's probably going to be a little different. I have decided that to the best of my ability, I'm going to make videos instead of posting lectures as text because I think that um, students learn better on video and when people read text, they're basically skimming on the computer. I do that too. And so it's, um, it's perfectly normal for you to do that. And if you have the video, you can always go back to things and the sound of my voice, what I look like and things, you know, will, um, will stay with you, I think, a little bit better. So also, my camera is built into my laptop here and I'm reading off my desktop. So it's uh, there's about a two to three second delay and it's kind of disconcerting. So at some point I'm going to minimize my camera so I don't see myself talking, uh, but I won't know if anything's gone wonky. So the plan is, is that I'm going to do these lectures once a week and post them onto YouTube, caption them, and get them back to you. So today we're going over the syllabus. In Canvas, the syllabus is posted. I sent you a draft, but now I have completed it in the official one. And so then once this video gets up there, as you see, the course will be published. So let's just go through it a little bit. Um, I suggest that you open it or print it out and follow along with the sound of my voice if you can do that. Okay. As I said, I'm John Fox, PhD. My office is in room 3003. And I am there Monday mornings, 8 to 9 a.m. and Saturday, uh, Wednesday mornings, 9 to 10 a.m. Or I can meet you online. We can do a little like chat thing or something. From a kind of a difficult thing to do for me is to answer questions through email when they're very complicated. So it's better to have a conversation. However, I also know that sometimes it's um, that's difficult to do. So. I mean, we should probably do some kind of figure out how to do a video chat thing. Um, when you have like big questions about an assignment. Uh, my office out, uh, phone number is 650-949-7419. You can reach me by email, foxjohn at fhda.edu. I will probably be on Canvas uh, three days a week. So yeah, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So you can reach me through Canvas as well. I check my email foxjohn at fhda.edu much more than I should. So that's the basics. So it's sociology of gender. Many of you have taken a sociology class before, and as you know, sociology is the study of social behavior and human groups. And so one of the things we study is gender, and gender really is everywhere. It's uh, gender it happens from the time we are born. We are taught what to wear, what to how to dress, how to talk, how to walk, how to behave, and our particular roles in society as well. So, but there's a certain price for that too. 
I'm going to argue next week that the construction of gender makes us all less human, first of all, okay? That we lose part of our humanity because of gender. Also going to argue that gender is not just, um, it doesn't just reside in our personalities. We are not just men and women or masculine and feminine. It's not just a matter of like, our identities, but gender is an organizing principle in American society. In other words, gender is part of the social structure. Gender is a structural variable. Who gets what jobs? Who is responsible for raising children? Who is responsible for um, leading in politics? All of these roles in societies are gendered roles. We associate them with gendered people, okay, with certain genders, I should say. So every society does this too. Every society, in every society, there's a division of labor by gender. And we'll talk about that later, why that is. That's the only thing you can talk about with gender in terms of what's universal, is that every society... Um, focuses its labor on gender. Gender is also not just who we are, it's what we do. Let me interrupt this for a second. I have a Yorkshire Terrier that barks, and so every now and then you might hear it bark, as you might now. So her name is Zena, and uh, you know, just um, say hi to Zena when you hear this, okay? She'd, she'd appreciate that. So this class is an investigation into these three levels of gender, okay? Gendered selves in terms of gender and our personalities, the gendered social structure in terms of how um, gender is an organizing principle in society, and doing gender, okay? Um, gender as a performance, okay? Gender as a, um, you know, gender is an accomplished activity, okay? And a failed gender performance can have some pretty serious consequences, okay? So this is what this class will do, okay? Um, we're also going to basically question the whole construction. Um, this is where a lot of you are ahead of sociologists. Um, there are many people who have rejected gender altogether. Um, many of them identify as non-binary or genderqueer or agender. And, um, or in some ways, they are um, questioning, challenging the whole construction of gender. Mm. Sociologists have been doing that, but not to this extent. Um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of sociologists that, you know, can't quite make the jump. So we'll talk about that too. So your required textbooks, let's see if I have them here. Yes. Thinking about women, okay? This is a really cool textbook here by Margaret Anderson. This is the 10th edition. I think this is the last time I'm going to use it. And the reason why is because the only versions I found that were newer were digital versions. And I don't like the digital versions because students don't learn as well. So this is your main textbook. So this is the 10th edition. Um, so, in, you know, so in, in um, fall, it's probably, I'm probably going to change to something else. There's a few candidates I don't know, but I know this book very well, too. Okay. Margaret Anderson's Thinking About Women, um, Sociological Perspectives on Sex and Gender. And your reader, which is really cool, is Gender Through the Prism of Difference. This is by uh, Maxine Bakazin is uh, one of my favorite sociologists. Uh, Pierrette Fondagnu Sotelo, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, also does very good work. I'm also familiar with Michael Mesner's work quite a bit. He does a lot of things on masculinity and sports and things. And Amy Dennison, I don't know who she is, but uh, Maxine Bakazin does a lot of um, a lot of stuff, um, you know, college textbooks and things like that. And I like her work. <clears throat> she does a lot of things on race and ethnicity as well. So this is the fifth edition of Gender Through the Prism of Difference. 
and it, um, it has all sorts of very interesting readings. I think that they're pretty up to date. Okay. So uh, the Margaret Anderson textbook is going to be referred to in the course schedule as text. The um, uh, gender through the prism of difference in the course schedule is going to be referred to as reader. Okay, keep that in mind as we go on to page two. Student learning outcomes, they are there. You'll demonstrate an understanding of the social construction of gender, analyze sociological theories of gender socialization, and analyze gender inequality within social institutions. Okay, you will learn that in a lot more. Um, they make me put that on my syllabus, so that's why it's there. Okay, course requirements. What do I want from you? The first thing I want from you is to read. Um, I used to, when I'm doing this introduction in my face-to-face -face class, I make a point in discussing that I assign readings that you don't want to do. If I knew that you were going to do these readings, I would not assign them. I would not make you do this following thing. It's called the response paper. Okay, it's a little bit different than what those of you who have had me an introduction to sociology, you didn't have to include the main textbook in your response papers. Now you do. Okay, so for this class. So what I want you to do is each week, um, write um, a double spaced typed 12 point Times New Roman or the equivalent response paper to the readings. First, and you should structure it like so. First, you summarize the readings, the thesis, the evidence, the main points that the author is trying to make. Give me a summary of the reading, okay? Then when you're done summarizing the readings, the assigned readings, try to make connections between them. Try to connect the readings to one another try to connect the readings to uh, other course material like my lectures or the videos or, you know, even things you learned in other classes about gender, okay? Then evaluate the content of the readings, not the style. I don't want you to say, well, this reading was stupid, you know, don't say that. Um, get into like, you know, what's what was it that was like, how was it like, you know, in what way was the shortcoming, okay? Or don't say this reading is boring, okay? This is a very academic style. You might not be used to it, and that's okay. But we're going to um, we're going to get through it. This is whole thing about writing for the audience, and you're not really the intended audience. You are becoming the audience. So that's why sometimes it's difficult, and sometimes a lot of these things seem kind of boring. I feel you. Um, I feel the same way when I read a physics textbook because I'm not a physicist. So, so for example, the first response paper should be completed by the end of the first week of class. Okay, and you will um, write a paragraph on chapter one in thinking about women, um, studying women, feminist perspectives. You talk about the thesis and the evidence. Then write one paragraph summarizing the five sexes revisited. You focus on the thesis and the evidence here. Then you write a paragraph summarizing the new science of sex difference, and then write a paragraph um, on theorizing difference from multicultural feminism. You write a paragraph trying to connect those with each other or other course material, and then you evaluate. Okay, that is should be about five or six paragraphs um, uh, and at least four pages. And you follow the same structure every week. Skip on down to the course schedule to page five at the very bottom. So for that next week, for week two, you'll write a paragraph on the social construction of gender then doing gender, determining gender, then what it means to be gendered me, then hybrid masculinities, you connect, you evaluate. That's the second one. You follow that structure every week. And so there's 11 weeks that we have readings. 
and 10 response papers are required. So you can miss a week and it won't hurt your grade at all. It won't hurt your score and it won't help you to do an extra one. So if you're having trouble getting your books this week, you can um, use this as your free week, or if you're having a hard time in midterms, or if you just want to concentrate on finals and get them all over with, that's fine too, okay? They are due at 11.59 on every Friday, 11.59 p.m., I should say, um, every Friday, okay? So do that. Second is class participation. <clears throat> Think of this as um, stuff you do in class anyway. I usually don't grade on participation in an online class, but there's a lot of things I do in the classroom that has a lot of interaction. I'm adapting some of these activities to uh, being online, to, to an online format. Some of them I can do, some of them I can't. As some of you know who have had me in the introduction to sociology, you would know that some activities cannot be done in an online class. Um, but I'm going to adapt some of them. So um, the first, um, I call these a lecture activities. So each week there's a lecture from me that I'm presenting here. And then I'm going to give you some activity to do. Um, so um, the activities I post will be ones um, that I use um, for face-to-face -face class modified for the online class, okay? You'll be retrieving, retrieving instructions in the module. There are 10 le um, lecture activities that um, you've got to do. So again, you can skip one and that's okay. And then documentary discussions. I hope that you all got my email about Canopy. You got to get um, an account through Canopy. Now there's instructions on the syllabus here about how to access it through a local library. What I didn't put on the syllabus and what you, if you've listened to this video that you'll know is that you can access it through De Anza College Library. So when you create your account, say that you go to De Anza College and they'll, um, it will, um, um, it will like transfer you to your portal and then you, you sign in there with your student ID and then you have access to Canopy through the De Anza College library website. Um, so I didn't put that on there because I didn't want, um, I, I think it's technically okay that we do it, but I'm not sure. And I just didn't let the whole class from Foothill using De Anza's um, library's um, site. Even though I think it's okay to do, I am not 100% sure. So, you know, so that's why I have you get a library card and things like that. But if you have problems with that, then like you can do it through De Anza's, especially. And I think De Anza's has un unlimited access. So, you're going to watch a video every week, a documentary about gender. They are now in the, um, in the course schedule, so all of them. So you're going to watch, and then you're going to post um, in the discussion um, sections uh, of Canvas. So what you do is, um, you know, write 350 words, which is about a page worth of discussion. Um, what you generally liked about the documentary, you could talk about that. You could talk about the most valuable, surprising, controversial, or contradictory thing you learned. Talk about how the documentary relates to course material, how the documentary relates to other things you've learned about gender, or um, how you would improve the content of the documentary, or anything else you want. Here's the deal. Some students are very good at not having structure, just letting their thoughts go and exploring ideas and things like that. Other students need more structure. So this we could go both ways. You could follow the structure if you want. You don't have to. You can go off and do your own thing if you'd like. Um, let's see how this turns out. Also, respond to a classmate's post. Um, of course, if you're the first one to post that week, you don't have to do that. You can just post yours and others can respond to your post. 
and we'll see how these discussions go. Um, so, um, 10 discussion posts are required for 11 weeks, so you can skip one. So, week to week, you'll be doing one, response papers, two, classroom activity, three, discussion post on the documentaries you're watching through Canopy. Okay? That is your basic routine. There's a couple other assignments too. Next is my favorite assignment that I'm going to talk about oh, in a couple weeks. It's the cross-dressing assignment. What you will do is you will get and wear and put on an article of clothing that does not conform to your gender. And we will then, you'll write a paper about the experience. It's, I'll give you more details later, it's my favorite assignment that I do in any class ever because, isn't it just closed? No, it's not just closed. But in some ways it's just closed. No, it's not just closed. Why, what's different about it? You know, this is how the social construction of gender works. And it is, it shows how powerful the social construction of gender is. It shows how powerful something is that we just made up as a society. There is no biological reason that a man would feel uncomfortable in a dress. Yet, when men wear dresses, how do they feel? Very uncomfortable. But it's not about biology. So, and then a final exam. This will be an XA exam. I will distribute this in week 11. I go back and forth on what the finals are going to be. It will relate to the student learning outcomes. Um, let's see how things go. Um, so this is where um, on late work, okay, um, late work. I don't like work turned in late. Um, when you ask, when you turn in work late, you are asking your instructor to rearrange their schedule for you, okay? So I might have plans with my wife to do something, yet if I'm grading papers, I can't do that. I set a certain amount of time in certain blocks in order to read papers. So you're messing with my schedule, and ultimately you're kind of messing with my marriage too. So, however, I prefer that you do it than not do it. Even if you do it late, and even if you realize you're getting a D minus in the class, I prefer that you do it than not. So I accept them, but there are penalties. Response papers, as I said, are due every Friday at 11.59 p.m. in Canvas. They are worth four points each. They are docked one point if they are late at all, they are docked two points if more than one week late. They are docked three points if more than two weeks late. Okay. And this is out of four points. For the lecture activity and, doc, um, and documentary discussion posts, they are worth two points each. Both of them are worth two points each. And they are docked a point if they are late. Just if they are late. They are due um, each Friday at 11.59 p.m. on campus. On the cross-dressing assignment, you will have the opportunity to rewrite the paper if you are not happy with your score. However, late papers lose the rewrite option and they will be held to a higher standard, okay? And the final exam is not accepted if it's late unless you have permission from me. Now, in cases of documented medical um, emergencies or troubles with the legal system, and perhaps some other, you know, for those two, for sure, you can turn in work late without penalty. 
if there is something else going on, I want you to talk to me and I want you to, uh, and then I might make an exception. I might make exceptions. Um, but we have to have a conversation about it. So, and I'm, I'm a pretty reasonable person. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to yell at you for asking. So don't, you know, be afraid about that. Don't get intimidated, you know? So anyway, that's that. So those are my policies on late work. The grading policy, you can see there on page four of the syllabus, um, response papers are 20% of your grade. Class participation is 20%, and that is 10% class activity and 10% documentary responses. You know, seriously, in class participation, think of those as not as homework, but as something you are doing in class, okay? Because these videos are not going to take very long. The documentaries will take um, a while, but these lectures will not take very long, okay? Um, the cross-dressing assignments, 30% of your grade, as in the final, as is the final. However, there's a rule about online classes saying that you have to attend the first week of class. And attending is not just logging on and logging off, not just watching this video and logging off. You have to actually do something. So... You have to do an in-class activity or a discussion post or a response paper the first week of class or I will drop you from the class. That is not up to me. That is a policy I've been told that is part of Foothills policy. I'm not sure if all instructors obey it or not. I am going to go along with it because I don't like being yelled at by the powers that be. So I'm um, so that's what I want you to do. You have to do one of those three things the first week. That will count as attendance. And also what's required of me is that you will be getting feedback in one form or another to the uh, to either your um, to everything you turn in also. So there's that. Okay. Um, on to page five of the syllabus. Um, first of all, if there's any reason why you're not going to do well in the class, I want you to talk to me and so that we can come up with some kind of solution. If there are challenges that you face in your personal life or in your academic life, Foothill College has a lot of resources and I have a lot of resources. So um, I want you to um, to talk to me about it. Um, you know, and I have a little quote there from um, Albus Dumbledore in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Help will always be given uh, at Hogwarts to those who ask for it. The same goes for Foothill. Maybe not everybody you come across will help you out, but I'll make every effort to do that. So um, I'll do what I can. So that's that. I want you to let me know if I can help in any way. Okay. I have a section in the class called, uh, in my face-to-face um, -face classes, called Things That Bother Me. And most of it is about managing the classroom. That there's a couple of things that apply to um, to online things. I'm sure that this will grow as I get more experience teaching online, but there's a couple of things. First of all, um, plagiarism and cheating and things like that. I try to make this as uncheatable as possible. That's why you don't have online quizzes and online, you know, tests and things like that. They're just too easy to cheat. Okay. I try to have this, um, I try to have this as uncheatable as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. However, um, if I do catch you cheating, uh, you'll be given a zero on the assignment. I will report you to the Dean of Student Affairs, and I will be very unhappy with you, and we have to have a conversation, okay? Um, also, in the online discussions, um, I, I was told in a class recently that most of the time online discussions are more like, hey, I totally agree with you about this point you made. I, you know, and 
things like that. It's like it doesn't really get into a lot of depth in terms of debates and things. And um, I um, and I've noticed this also when I teach uh, intro to sociology in hybrid. I would encourage respectful debating on the issues, asserting your respect for one another, but it's okay to disagree. It's okay to disagree with um, the people in the video. It's okay to disagree with me. It's okay to disagree with your classmates. What evidence do you have to support your claims is the main thing I'm interested in. You know, how do you back your arguments? So um, in science, opinions based on research are superior to opinions not based on research. I should say observation. So opinions based on observation are superior to positions not based on observation. So what's your evidence? Things like that. There are debates in academia about gender and some of them I, you know, there are some academic positions that I reject. So that I disagree with. You will learn these positions as the class goes on. Okay, but you don't have to agree with me either. So here's what we got. Um, let's go into the course schedule. Okay, first, introduction to the course and feminist perspectives. Uh, so um, there, um, we're going to talk about, so this is today, I'm going to show a documentary called Michael Kimmel on Gender. He's Michael Kimmel is one of the foremost gender um, sociologists. He's at uh, City University of New York in Stony Brook. Um, he's friends of friends of people. Um, he's... Um, it's a pretty good video, I um, and then um, you're going to watch that, and you'll have a response to it. Your class activity this week is to do the um, student survey, okay? Um, it's a survey that um, you can skip questions if you want, but it uh, helps me get to know you, where you're at, what your needs are, things like that, okay? Um, so... So that's our video class activity and a uh, response paper number one will be due that week on to the first chapter in uh, thinking about women and to the first three chapters in, um, in gender through the prism of difference. Okay. You have to do one of these activities or you will be dropped from the course. Okay. Have to do one of those three things that week by then, or I will drop you. Okay. I want to make sure that's understood. Then we'll get into the social construction of gender. I usually do a classroom activity on this. I'm going to try to replicate it, but I don't know if I can. Okay, I don't know if I can do that online here. So we'll see how that goes. I'll be working on it. Um, what I want to learn to do is figure out, I'm going to post PowerPoints also, but I want to try to figure out how to put a PowerPoint over this video that so that you're looking at the PowerPoint rather than my head and talking and all that stuff and my, you know, trophies and bobbleheads and books in the background and whatever. OK, um, so so you're looking at that rather than me. However, um, and in that way, I'll be able to do things much in a much easier way. Otherwise, I'll have you just follow through on the PowerPoint. So social construction of gender, we'll talk about the three levels of gender, we'll talk about um, yeah, gender socialization, things like that. We'll talk about the, um, yeah, we'll talk about, um, yeah, gendered selves, gender social structure, and doing gender. I'll get into details of all of those things. And then um, and you'll have some kind of class activity there. I think I'm, you might might have you get a children's book and um, do an analysis of um, something in a children's book. That's what I think I'm going to have you do. Uh, it's taught, uh, just to give you a little hint, if you want to look it up, it's an exercise that's based upon um, um, on something called meta messages. Okay, the meta messages of gender that we get in um, in um, 
these, it's called um, cultural lens theory. Basically that, you know, we look at gender through a cultural lens. And so, um, <clears throat> and including gender inequality. Okay. We'll look at gender culture in the media. Um, there's a lot done on, on gender in the media. We're going to watch a video called Tough Guys 2. Okay, this is the second one. It's by a guy named Jackson Katz. He is uh, one of the foremost gender scholars um, in the United States in terms of masculinities. He um, <coughs> was not only... Um, he went to University of Massachusetts at Amherst, where I also went, but he was in, um, he was the first man to get a degree in women's studies, and he was also on the football team. So he has a very interesting kind of like blend of gender here, uh, going on. So, um, so we're going to watch Tough Guys. The first one had a profound impact on me and my scholarship. So, um, and then, um, so, uh, you you'll have a response paper there. It's about, just on Tough Guys too. It's uh, about the construction of masculinity in the media. And he argues that the construction of violent masculinity is a cultural norm. It's not something that's deviant or out of the norm. Violence is a part of the norm when it comes to masculinity. Okay. And uh, um, some of the consequences of that. Then we'll talk about sexuality and um, intimate relationships. I'm going to talk about the social construction of sexuality, which uh, a lot of people have a hard time with because uh, we think of sexuality as something that's biological. And there are some, uh, some obvious biological aspects to it, but a lot of sexuality is learned. It's, um, you know, and when I say sexuality, I'm talking about some very broad things very broad things. And we can see this as like, if we look at um, sexuality across cultures, we see that sexuality is very different. So um, so we can um, talk about uh, that. Then we're going to take a look at some of our social institutions and um, look at gender inequality within these institutions. One is uh, work in the economy where we will talk about the wage gap. Um, we'll talk about um, the glass ceiling, the glass escalator. Um, we'll talk about something called the second shift. Um, actually, we'll talk about the second shift in um, next week when we talk about gender and families. Actually, that's kind of our bridge between the two. Um, I'll um, show you a video that's gotten a lot of acclaim called Half the Picture. It's about female directors in Hollywood and speaking out about gender inequality in Hollywood. Um, if, uh, for those of you who are film majors or communications majors, you might be interested in that. Then we'll talk about gender and families. Again, the second shift. We'll talk about um, a lot of things about I used to teach marriage and family at um when I talk, when I taught at De Anza College, and so there's a lot of options there. Haven't quite figured out everything, but I'm going to uh, do that. We're going to watch a video called Power and Control. It's about domestic violence. Uh, yeah, it's pretty powerful, and I should say this right now. Um, this class, like all of my classes, is basically a trigger warning. Um, we're going to talk about some things that are very difficult, and so Get your support systems in, play, in place here and let me know if there's something that's too much for you and we'll talk about it. So, um, but yeah, there's a, make sure you have like, you know, friends and people to talk to if you need to. Okay. Um, then we'll go into gel, uh, gender health and uh, reproduction and gender and sports. Okay. Um, we'll talk about um, women's health and how, um, or so-called women's health. We'll talk about how women have been, like women and reproduction have been under the gaze of medicine. Um, basically the medicalization of pregnancy and childbirth. We'll talk about, and you're we're gonna watch a video that's pretty interesting um, called Passion Empowered, the Technology of Orgasms. The technology of Orgasm. Uh, yeah, it's about um, how vibrators were invented. We'll just leave that there. It's quite a story, okay? It's uh, quite a story, but we'll we'll talk about it, okay? And your cross-dressing assignment will be due on Friday, May 24th. 
Then we're going to go into gender and crime and deviance and gender and religion. Um, we will talk about, um, this is where I do um, the rape lecture. So I'm going to talk about rape here and we'll talk about the importance of consent and asking for it. You might get two videos that week, by the way. One you'll have to respond to, the other is just will be part of my lecture, okay? So, um, and uh, so an act of love, that's on gender and religion. So um, you'll be responding to that. And, um, but I think, I think I'm also gonna have you watch a, a video called Asking For It. Um, that's also on Canopy and I show that to my regular uh, class in terms of the, um, that will probably be your activity that, um, that time. So about like, uh, you know, so writing about something about consent. So, and then, um, let's see, then we've got, um, gender education and science. We're going to talk about, well, this is one place where women have been, um, well, I should say, you know, part of us making great strides or something, but, um, this is where women do better than men in many ways is in education. Women tend to get higher grades. They're more likely to complete the class. They're more likely to, but yet it doesn't translate into economic wealth the same way. And when you get into the very higher levels, women face discrimination. And we'll talk about how and why things change and things like that. Um, so a little bit of a hint is because of discrimination against women in the um, in the workforce, there's like not as many options for women other than going to school and succeeding in school. So that's a, just a, that's a, a preview of that section. Okay. Then we'll talk about gender, power, and politics and uh, gender and social change. And here um, we're talking about like, you know, political change here. We'll talk about some social movements. I'm going to show you a new video called Jane. This is on the, um, on um, abortion and the um, the fight to make um, you know to provide um, safe abortions for women when abortion was legal. Uh, this was a very radical group of people. So um, it's uh, yeah, I didn't know that this group existed until several years ago, and I was quite surprised about it. And then the revival, Women in the Word, um, is our last video where we talk about gender and social change. This particularly is on um, um, is um, black women and um, you know connecting to civil rights and things of that sort. And we're going to talk about uh, feminism. Okay, so we'll um, we'll do that. So and then um, your. Um, and then um, week 12 uh, is finals week. Most of you, I think, will have your final exam done by June 28th at 11.59 p.m. because you just want to be done. Actually, graduation will have already occurred. So it's uh, hopefully most of you will get it in by then, but I will accept it up to that point. So um, that's the syllabus. Um, if you have any questions, I might set up a little discussion um, you know, um, section two um, for questions on this, or there might be room here for you to ask questions. I'll try to uh, get that going. So, so my next step is to shut this thing down. And I'm going to post it onto my YouTube page. My YouTube page, by the way, is private, but I'll post you links, and I think that that will work. So, um, I've been told that this will work. So that's that. So. Um, if there's any questions, get them to me one way or another. Send me a message or an email or post some comments somewhere or, um, or, or things like that. So, or maybe I'll do like a little, um, maybe I'll do a little like group email thing for, for all of us on, uh, on this. So, um, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to, um, to teaching you all. I love what I do. I'm Part of me is looking forward to seeing how online education can go. Uh, those of you who know me know I'm a big critic of it, but um, I think it's going to be okay. So anyway, um, again, looking forward to it. And um, yeah, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing your responses and hearing from you on Canvas. 
Um, have a great day. Have a great week. And um, see you next time. Bye.